人も子供も一緒になって楽しめるドリームランド皆さんとご一緒にこの大遊園地にご案内いたしましょうここはメインストリート18世紀後半のアメリカ風な建物がにぎやかに立ち並びいろいろな変わった乗り物が走っていますプリンスやプリンセスの夢をそのままにここでは二棟建ての馬車にも誰でもが気軽に乗ることができます And like Main Street, this is where our story begins. Take a journey with me, if you will, back to the year 1961. Yuri Gagarin becomes the first. Person to ever be put into space and survive. John F. Kennedy has just become the President of the United States of America. The first Six Flags Park, Six Flags Over Texas opens in Arlington, Texas. Disney releases the beloved movie Babes in Toyland, and a small theme park in Nara, Japan opens to the public for the very first time. Except if you had paid a visit to Anaheim, California, the park may look eerily familiar to somewhere you may have been. Before. And there was good reason for that. If you or I were to visit this park, we may think it was a knockoff of Walt Disney's original Magic Kingdom in Anaheim, Disneyland, but the truth was that this seemingly knockoff Disneyland was way closer to being an official Japanese Disneyland than we may have realized. This is the story of the construction, planning, opening, operating, and downfall of Nara Dreamland in Nara, Japan, and how it almost became Walt. Walt Disney's second Magic Kingdom almost 10 years before Walt Disney World opened in 1971. Today is all about the downfall of Nara Dreamland. In the later half of the 1950s, Kunizu Matsuo, a Japanese businessman, visited the now opened Disneyland in Anaheim, California. During the construction of Disneyland, lots of critics agreed that Walt was going into uncharted territory here, and that he was getting in over his head and Disneyland would be a failure, yada yada. When it opened in 1955, Disney absolutely proved every single one of those people completely wrong. Like, it wasn't even close. At the end of its first year of operation, Disneyland had welcomed over three and a half million guests through its gates, making it, and I quote, the largest single private enterprise attraction in the Western Hemisphere and a complete success, according to the park's management. In today's terms, Disneyland was a pretty big deal, and Matsuo recognized this. He also just so happened to be the president of the Matsuo Entertainment Company. Matsuo knew that Disneyland was something special, and he thought something similar to Disneyland would be perfect in Japan. The Disney style and Disney itself was already extremely popular in Japan. Osamu Tezuka, known as the father of manga, was heavily inspired by Walt Disney Animation Studios films in the 30s and 40s. And bringing Disneyland back to his home country seemed like a great way to engage Japan and Disney even more, and also to make money. Businessmen like money, also. Who can blame the man? And also, more Disneylands coming out of the deal wouldn't hurt either. Mr. Matsuo eventually met with Walt Disney himself and began talking about bringing Disneyland to Japan's old capital, Nara. And believe it or not, Walt was very enthusiastic about the idea of Disneyland going global. And so, with the full support of Walt himself and the Disney company, Matsuo began planning and construction for the all new Nara Disneyland. Nara Disneyland was supposed to be extremely Extremely similar to Disneyland in Anaheim with a few differences. Like in Anaheim, there was to be an Adventureland, a Fantasyland, Tomorrowland, Main Street USA, and a castle serving as the focal point at the end of Main Street. There was also a railroad circling the entire perimeter of the park, but the only station where the train would stop would be at Main Street. Although the Nara Railroad would feature a Wild West diorama, very similar to the Grand Canyon diorama at Disneyland. Drawing even more of a parallel with Disneyland, there was going to be a Matterhorn type mountain bobsled ride called the Bobsleigh, and a Skyway which ran from Fantasyland to Tomorrowland and back, going through the mountain. Now, the similarities at this point should be pretty apparent to you, but keep in mind, At this point during construction, this was not a Disneyland knockoff. This was going to be a real, official Disneyland park outside of the United States. And it was coming along swimmingly until one very troubling thing happened. 
That's right, everyone. Now we get to talk about licensing, licensing fee negotiations. negotiations. Pretty terrifying, if you ask me. Toward the end of the construction for Dreamland, Walt and Matsuo kind of had a falling out about the licensing agreements for the Disney characters. With 90% of the park already completed and built in Disneyland style, you can see why the inclusion of Disney characters was so important to Dreamland's success. You can't have Peter Pan's flight without the rights to Walt Disney's Peter Pan, the Peter Pan's flight attraction, by the way, already nearing completion, you couldn't have Dumbo the Flying Elephant or Alice in Wonderland's Mad Tea Party, and so the Disney character rights were a very, very big deal. Except for one specific land in the park. You see, the American frontier didn't hold the same kind of nostalgia for the Japanese people as it did for Americans. So instead of Frontierland on the left side of the park, you would have experienced Ancestorland, themed around the history of Japan, with the houses of old samurais being on display, and different riverboats you could take around the rivers of Amer- I mean Japan. As for other Disneyland equivalent rides, there was going to be a Peter Pan's flight ride in Fantasyland, but you know, when that whole deal fell through, the ride was rebranded to the Miracle House, where you would fly over different countries of the world. In Adventureland, they had the Jungle Cruise, which was, well, I, it was the Jungle Cruise from Disneyland. It was basically the same ride, and with the same ride vehicles and everything. Instead of a Haunted Mansion, which wouldn't open at Disneyland for almost another 10 years, Nara Dreamland had a Haunted Maze attraction where you would wander through the dark halls trying to find one of three stations where you could get your postcard punched and maybe get a reward at the end? Either that or you had the satisfaction of having your punch card punched three times. And come on, let's be real guys, that's a reward in of itself. There was also, like at Disneyland, a monorail running through Tomorrowland with an Autopia style ride below it. Instead of Autopia though, this one was just simply called Freeway. All of these attractions I just mentioned were obviously meant to replicate various ones already found at the the Disney parks. But when the negotiations fell through for the character rights, Matsuo had to scramble to create his own original ideas and characters for Nara Dreamland. The ride that was once intended to be the submarine voyage was filled in eventually and became another sort of Autopia clone. Instead, this time, instead of driving futuristic cars through the highways of tomorrow, you drove old antique cars through a flat, unthemed road. Just whatever you do, remember not to bump the car in front of you. I don't know how many times I have to say that. And with the Disney deal Falling through, instead of Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse, you had Ran Chan and Dory Chan. Two kids, a boy and a girl, dressed up as British royal guards. You know, the ones with the big, long black hats? Th those things. I guess maybe their British costumes were supposed to play into the castle at the end of Main Street. Instead of being a fairy tale princess castle, it was just your generic medieval castle or British castle with these two children guarding it. At least, that's what I'm going to tell myself to have this all kind of make sense. And on July 1st of 1961, one with the construction complete mostly, Nara Dreamland was opened to the public. And to someone like you or me who had been to Disneyland before and seen the real thing, Dreamland may have seemed like a knockoff, but to the people of Japan it was the closest thing they could get to Disneyland at the time. And at its peak, Nara Dreamland welcomed 1.6 million guests per year, which is not too bad. In fact, I would go out on a limb and say that that's even Good. Then in 1979, something big happened to Nara Dreamland. Or more specifically, something big happened outside of Nara Dreamland. Now, there's Tokyo Disneyland. There's Chip. There's Davy Crockett. You sure we're not in Anaheim? There's the Haunted Mansion, FOB Disney World, Florida, with 999 ghosts and goblins, all made in the USA. And everyone, from country bears to enchanted tiki room parrots, seem to be singing the praises of Balance of Trade. <laughs> Yikes. The Oriental Land Company contacted the Walt Disney Company in order to create a Disney theme park in Tokyo, the current capital of Japan. I'm sure you can all see where I'm going with this. Four years later, Tokyo Disneyland opened in 1983, and now there was a real, legitimate Disneyland in Japan. And with a new, real Disneyland opened in Japan, it made Nara look even more like an old knockoff, because it was older, and on top of it, the Oriental Land Company had gotten the licensing rights 
for the Disney characters, so they could have a real Autopia, a real Peter Pan's flight. And to put it on an even higher pedestal than Nara Dreamland, Tokyo Disneyland opened with two very popular attractions from the American parks. Uh, you may know of them, you may not. Uh, two little rides called the Haunted Mansion and Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, Tokyo's Haunted Mansion, which was modeled after Orlando's Haunted Mansion, kind of blew the haunted maze out of the water. And Tokyo's Pirates of the Caribbean had the amazing fortune of being modeled after Disneyland's Pirates instead of the inferior Walt Disney World Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm just out here spitting facts, everyone. I'm sorry. Where was I again? We're talking about Pirates in the Haunted Mansion, right? No. Wait, no, no, Nara. Nara Dreamland. We're talking about Nara Dreamland. I remember now. All of these factors, not just the Haunted Mansion, led to Nara Dreamland's decline in the mid-80s. Less and less guests would visit every year because Tokyo Disney seemed like the far better option. And to be fair, it was. And in the year 2000, you could see the park decline in not only crowd numbers, but also quality. The grounds became littered with trash, and the facades for rides wouldn't be painted for years at a time, if at all. Stores began to close their doors all over the park, Park and rides began to rust while they were still standing, and in some cases even operating. Even though most of the time these ride vehicles would be completely empty going around the track because of the lack of visitors. Dreamland was in a really bad place, and they didn't have a huge parent company, like the Walt Disney Company, to bail them out of their economic problems. Like what ended up happening over at Euro Disney, now Disneyland Paris. Walking around the park in 2005 and 2006 may have seemed very depressing rather than happy and joyful. With old closed shops and rusting rides, and with the complete lack of other visitors, the place seemed run down and forgotten. And why go to the old run-down knockoff Nara Dreamland when you could go to the shiny, relatively new Tokyo Disneyland instead? And so, on the last day of August in 2006, the park closed down after 45 years of operation. But instead of demolishing Nara Dreamland and building something new and better on top of it, the park was left abandoned. And an abandoned Disneyland knockoff, of course, became a very popular place to visit for vloggers and urban explorers because it was an obscure, abandoned piece of Disneyland history left to rot in the middle of Japan. I mean, who wouldn't want to check that out? I would want to check that out. I want to go to Nara Dreamland. But if you are like me and you want to go visit, unfortunately, demolition began in 2016. A whole 10 years after the park closed, so 10 years of Nara Dreamland sitting there exposed to the elements it'd be a really interesting sight to see. If you look at this aerial shot from last year, not much is left of Dreamland besides the initial footprint of the park. You can see that it's shaped very similar to Disneyland, with the railroad running outside the park. You can also see the former roadway of the Freeway, or Autopia, attraction running through Tomorrowland. And you can also see the former Rivers of America equivalent on the left-hand side, except it's less of a river now and more of a ditch. At the end of 2016, it was reported that SK Housing had bought the land, and, as is the case for most cancelled and abandoned Disney ideas, as of October 16th it would be just over a year before demolition started, and if you take a look at the site today, you're not gonna find much more than a bunch of dirt and rocks. But the imprint of Japan's original Disneyland is still there, you can still see the park perimeter where the railroad used to go round and round and only stop at one place. And maybe sometime soon they'll start the development on the houses that are supposed to be going there. And everyone residing in those houses can know that they are staying on what was once the first attempt at a real Disneyland in Japan, backed initially by Walt Disney himself, now reduced to not much more than some trees, dirt, refuse, and memories not just for Disney fans and urban explorers who explored the abandoned Disney park, but for those who experienced their first glimpse of Disney magic, no matter how different it may be from Disneyland, there at Nara Dreamland. And that is the story of Nara Dreamland. Thank you all for sticking around to the end. Let me know if you enjoyed this video, if I should talk about more potential knockoff Disney things around the world, not necessarily parks, but maybe something else. Movies, maybe characters, well, who knows, we'll see in the future. The names you see scrolling past, though, are the names of my Patreon patrons. A massive, massive thank you to all of these patrons. They really help the channel uh, be what it is. I wouldn't be able to do what I do without them, so thank you to all of my patrons. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you're new here. If you like this kind of video, really helps me gauge interest on 
what to talk about in this channel, and I'm gonna go ahead and quit talking now. Everybody, thank you so much, not just for donating on Patreon, but if you don't have the money to do that, just watching the video. Thank you so much for watching and tuning in, leaving a comment, all of that really helps me out a whole lot. I will see you guys all in the next video. Goodbye.